so good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the uh, Fedora 4 training workshop. Uh, I think most of you were here yesterday, but there are uh, a couple of new faces. So I'll, I'll briefly introduce uh, myself. I'm David Wilcox. Uh, I'm the uh, product manager for Fedora uh, with Duraspace. Uh, I'm here with Andrew Woods, who's the uh, technical lead uh, on the project. Uh, and we're basically going to be going through uh, a set of four training modules today. Uh, this uh, this first module is, is uh, sort of an introduction and feature tour, uh, just kind of walking through what Fedora 4 is uh, and what some of the features are uh, that are sort of the, the, the core and, and uh, uh, most important features of, uh, of Fedora. Uh, okay, so let's get started with the, uh, uh, with the introduction uh, and the feature tour. Um, so uh, we've set up some learning outcomes uh, for this and the other modules, um, just to kind of um, try to make sure that we're, uh, we're, we're covering our bases here. So um, the, the idea here is that uh, we want you to kind of understand um, the purpose of a, of a Fedora repository, which uh, for this crowd, I think, is, is probably pretty self-evident, but uh, we'll briefly cover that, um, as well as what Fedora, and specifically what Fedora 4 can, uh, can do for you and why, why you'd be interested in Fedora 4. Um, and finally, just understanding the key capabilities of the software. So that's kind of what the, the focus is going to be here. Um, so uh, by way of introduction, um, we'll start out with just a very simple um, uh, uh, slide here on what exactly is uh, a Fedora repository. So um, I think it's just important to frame this in terms of what are we trying to accomplish with Fedora 4? Uh, what do we think of as a, as a Fedora 4 repository or Fedora repository in general? Because I think these also um, uh, apply in many ways to, um, to Fedora 3 as well. But um, so we, we think of a Fedora repository uh, as secure software that stores, preserves, and provides access to, to, to digital materials. Uh, and along with that, it, it's about sort of supporting these complex uh, semantic relationships uh, between objects, uh, and not just sort of within the repository, which was quite common in Fedora 3, but, uh, but also uh, outside of the repository. Um, and uh, scalability is important here as well. I, I think the, you know, um, the repository needs to be able to support uh, millions and potentially more uh, objects uh, and both large and small objects. So, you know, being able to handle these scalability and performance use cases. Um, and interoperability has always actually been a, a core tenet of Fedora. Um, it sometimes kind of gets lost in the mix, but I, I think it's very important to, um, uh, to think about interoperability and how Fedora repositories uh, are going to be able to uh, play a role in the broader repository community. Um, and along with these kind of principles is this idea of sort of exposing and connecting content. Uh, and so we want to, uh, you know, Fedora 4 aims to provide flexible and extensible content modeling, um, as well as being able to have really atomic objects and, and being able to connect things semantically um, in using standard ontologies. And of course, you know, you, you don't, Fedora doesn't force you to use standards, uh, but you should, uh, and it certainly provides the capabilities of supporting uh, virtually any kind of standard that you want to, uh, want to adopt. And, and that's a really important part of, uh, of Fedora. It's this flexibility, but also a focus on uh, using standards, which of course is up to individual implementers to, um, to do. Um, and one of the core uh, tenets of Fedora 4 in particular um, is uh, this idea of sort of, you know, native link data support. So uh, being able to use RDF-based metadata, um, uh, XML-based metadata is still supported, uh, but RDF-based metadata is sort of one of these uh, new uh, ideas that, uh, that we can really take advantage of in, in Fedora 4, uh, as well as providing a, a RESTful API um, and the native response format there is, is RDF, and I'll, I'll get into that as we, um, as we proceed here. Um, so those are just some, some of the kind of general principles um, of, uh, of Fedora 4. And, and now what I want to talk about are some of the, uh, the core components of the, uh, of the software. Um, so uh, we'll just kind of go through these uh, and, and one by one. Uh, I'll start with some of these kind of preservation ideas. And so uh, fixity comes up uh, quite often as uh, just the, the sort of principle of making sure that um, the, the, the things you put into your repository uh, remain consistent, at least at a bit level. Um, this isn't really taking into consideration sort of semantic changes that might happen, but just the, uh, the idea that the, the bits that you put in are the same bits that you take out, uh, whether it's tomorrow or, or 10 years down the road. Um, and so uh, this is uh, something that's fully supported or for, um, you know, and it's just sort of guarding against uh, bit rod and things like that. Um, so fixity checks, um, you can take, a, you can do these at, at several points. Uh, when you ingest an object into Fedora 4, uh, you can call a fixity check through the REST API, uh, and it will uh, run a checksum on that object, uh, and it will uh, compare it to um, a, a checksum that you've, you've provided along with it. 
Uh, or if this is uh, an object that's never been checksummed before, uh, then you can kind of generate and store that checksum on the object. Uh, and then later on, at any point, you can rerun a fixity check on any of these uh, any of these objects in your repository and, and compare it against the uh, uh, the stored value. And again, there's this is a, an API call. Uh, so if you've got an application layer over Fedora 4, you can set that up to uh, routinely check all of your items or subsets of your items at certain points um, to make sure that um, nothing has changed, uh, and then uh, do something about it if something has. Um, and all that can be kind of managed through um, through the API. Um, I think it goes without saying that backup and restore capabilities are really important. Uh, and there's not a lot to say here other than that they exist. So you know, at any point. You can back up your entire repository and, and you can restore it uh, very similarly to the way that you would have in Fedora 3. Um, this does uh, run into some issues uh, if you're scaling up to very large numbers of objects, very large repositories. Uh, doing a full backup and a full restore uh, can be a slow process and something that might not be all that practical uh, once your repository reaches a significant size. Um, and so to deal with some of those sorts of issues, there are also uh, features around uh, exporting and, and importing uh, chunks of the repository. So we'll be talking about some of the structure of the repository as we go. Um, but basically, it's represented uh, as a tree. Uh, and so you can select uh, a node uh, in the repository or a resource uh, and uh, export that resource or uh, a tree of resources. So it's kind of select a point in the tree and, and export everything below uh, a certain resource. Um, you can export that. Um, these exports get serialized in a JCR XML format, uh, and then you can re-import uh, these kind of chunks of your repository at any point. Uh, and so this is actually a potentially good way to um, handle cases where you need to do a partial restore of a repository um, rather than trying to restore your entire repository from a backup, which might be um, a rather uh, lengthy process. Um, there is also export functionality built in so that um, on repository update events, uh, you can kind of maintain um, a consistent uh, JCR XML representation of the entire repository uh, for sort of long-term transparency reasons. And we'll be getting into some of the structure and the way that uh, Fedora 4 structures data um, in the repository and on the file system. Um, but uh, there is some capability here for making sure that you can maintain a more or less human readable uh, open XML representation of your entire repository that is consistent with repository events going forward. Uh, and that's really there just in case you're concerned that the underlying technologies of Fedora may uh, someday go away, or you may want to uh, migrate to a different repository system, uh, and you may be concerned about transparency and the readability of the, uh, of the repository in the absence of, of a uh, of software application. Uh, so that kind of stuff um, uh, is, is available to you. Uh, versioning is a, another key component here, kind of dealing with the, the, the um, idea of preservation. Uh, and in Fedora 4, uh, versioning is quite flexible. So you can turn it on across the entire repository and have versions uh, of, of, uh, um, of your um, uh, resources created every time you make a change. Uh, but there's some flexibility here in that you can actually have versions created uh, on REST API calls. So you can kind of have versioning off by default, but just create a, a version whenever you want to create a version. And you could uh, have your application stack determine uh, what kinds of things get versioned and what kinds of things don't. Um, so you may have particular data streams or uh, particular types of content that you don't really want to create a new version every time it gets updated, uh, but then there are others that you may want to, or you may have situations where you want to make a particular update without creating a version um, and then you know make other updates with versions. So all that kind of stuff is supported. The versioning is uh, quite flexible, uh, and of course you can restore previous versions um, as well. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit here uh, about some of the, uh, the, the data modeling aspects of, uh, of Fedora 4. I think they're uh, pretty important to, uh, to cover. Uh, there are kind of emerging standards of, uh, of data modeling um, with, the, uh, with the application. So um, some terminology here that I think would be important to cover. Um, here, you, you'll probably hear me use uh, you know, objects and data streams um, occasionally we're like node, but we're trying to kind of get away from that um, and referring to things more generally as resources. So uh, in Fedora 4, um, objects and data streams are both types of resources and resource in the sense of web resources. And these things have a URI that you can, uh, you can reach them at. Uh, and uh, so uh, I think it's still going to be common to uh, refer to uh, things in Fedora 4 as, as objects and, and data streams in the same way that they were in Fedora 3. 
uh, but we can also refer to these more generally as resources. And so they are basically just resources with a type. Uh, so you have uh, a resource that is an object because it has an RDF type of object. Um, and then you have a uh, you know, resource that is a data stream uh, that is very, very similar to an object, but it, it has a type of data stream instead of a type of object. Um, and so it's a little bit uh, uh, more flexible than things were in, in Fedora 3, but that's just sort of the, uh, the terminology here. Um, and of course, you can have a setup where um, your, your objects uh, uh, can have children, so they can have child objects, and you can build out the tree that way. Um, and they can also have data streams as children. So this uh, very similar to the way things were set up in, in, um, uh, in Fedora 3, um, uh, but that's how, how things are represented. Um, and there is sort of a repository tree structure, and I think it's important to note that this is sort of uh, an inherent way that the repository is represented, uh, but it's not necessarily how you represent things your users. So um, the repository is a tree, there is a root node, uh, and all of the other, or you know, root, root resource, and all of the other resources uh, hang off of that root. Um, and you can take advantage of this in different ways. You can actually make this the logical structure of your repository, uh, sorting things into sort of collections and groupings, uh, and then do things like have security policies be inherited by um, uh, inheriting them down through the tree. So that that's a possibility. Uh, there are those that are that are taking that route. Um, but, uh, our, of course, the, the sort of RDF representation, the graph representation of the repository uh, is still fully supported. And that's more or less, I think, how people will be representing their content in Fedora 4. So uh, if you use uh, Islandora or Hydra or some other front end application, probably what you're going to expose to your users is not so much the, uh, the sort of repository tree, but the, the RDF relationships between, uh, between those objects. So, um, in many senses, that's, that's sort of not going to change, but it's important to note that the repository does have this sort of native uh, tree structure. And we'll be going through that a little bit more detail uh, throughout the day, just to make sure that you sort of understand um, what it is that we're talking about here. Um, another important change here, and, and something that's um, um, good to note is this uh, uh, idea of properties. So uh, all of the resources within the system uh, have properties associated with them. And these properties um, are uh, expressed as RDF triples. And, and more specifically, what that means is that they are um, a set of name value pairs uh, that get translated to RDF uh, when uh, through the, uh, the REST API responses. So um, if you can kind of think of this, if you're looking at a resource in Fedora, uh, that resource is the implicit subject of all of these triples. So if each triple is, is you know, subject, predicate, object, then the resource you're looking at is the subject, uh, and the name in the name value pair is the predicate, and the value in the name value pair, or key value pair, is the, uh, is the object. Um, so that's sort of, uh, and, and Andrew later in the day will be kind of uh, showing a little bit more of, of, of how this works, but that's how everything is, um, is set up. Uh, and of course, you can still have uh, XML data streams um, and handle things that way, but these properties exist on uh, on every resource um, in this native uh, RDF language. Uh, and of course, the targets of these, uh, of these properties, the, uh, the value in the pair, uh, can be a literal. So, you know, it can be just your basic uh, DC title with a, a string of characters is the, the, the target of this triple. Um, or it can be a URI. And this is where things kind of get, um, you know, into the world of linked data, uh, where you can establish more of these semantic relationships uh, and link out to things in, in the broader world. So that URI could be uh, another resource in the repository, or it could be a URI uh, somewhere out in the world. Uh, and so this is sort of um, uh, opening the door to more interesting data modeling possibilities than, um, uh, than necessarily existed in, in Fedora 3. And uh, we'll be talking about some of these new possibilities uh, in the next section, which deals kind of with um, ideas of migrating to Fedora 4 and what some of the new opportunities for enhancing your data uh, might be, but I, I think this is sort of uh, a really a crucial and important difference and new feature of Fedora 4 is this uh, really increased capability of, of participating in the world of linked open data uh, and making it so that Fedora repositories can be kind of exposed to the semantic web and, and uh, share and disseminate information in ways that really wasn't possible before. Um, so uh, those of you that use uh, Fedora 3 are probably familiar with this concept of content modeling, and of course this still exists uh, in Fedora 4. The process is um, slightly different, uh, but in Fedora 4 uh, there are compact node definitions and, and mix-ins. So you know, a mix-in 
uh, is where you sort of define a set of properties that correspond to a certain type of object. So your mixin uh, can have uh, define the uh, the mime types that are allowed for a certain type of object. It can define the uh, the properties that that are allowed for for a certain type of object. Um, and you can uh, have as many of these mixins in a in a compact node definition, which is sort of the Fedora four equivalent of a content model, um, as you want. So you can set up many mixins. Uh, it supports this kind of idea of a multiple inheritance. So um, and it's done just through simple RDF typing. So if you have a resource, that resource has a a type of image, let's say, uh, and you have you know a, an image mixin, uh, and that image mixin defines what MIME types are allowed, JPEGs, PNGs, that kind of thing, uh, and maybe other assorted other properties. Uh, and so when you create that image resource, you give it that image type, and then uh, Fedora will know that you can have uh, that inherit certain properties from from the image mixin. Um, and so, yeah, you can have uh, uh, multiple mixins on any particular uh, resource and, and inherit those properties um, in kind of in a multiple uh, inheritance way. So uh, it's a very flexible way of modeling content. Uh, it does have some limitations currently. Uh, yesterday, Stefano talked about some of the these limitations, but they um, involve things like not being able to uh, restrict MIME types. So, you know, you can have a mixin that, that sort of allows certain MIME types, but they're not able to sort of uh, do the opposite of, of sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, restricting a, a particular MIME type. So there are some limitations to the way that, that these are set up, um, but these are things that the community, I think, will will find answers to as, as the use cases kind of um, come forward and we, and we look into these in um, more detail. But so this is a very sort of flexible content modeling system um, and potentially provides a way of sharing content models because you can set up these compact node definitions uh, that are um, associated with a number of mixins, uh, and these are potentially shareable amongst different uh, repository systems. So the Hydra and Islandora communities, for example, could um, settle upon standards for content node definitions or compact node definitions um, and make these uh, shareable and interoperable. Um, so there, there's some really kind of interesting uh, potential applications of, of this sort of um, flexibility that the system provides. Um, and more on sort of the linked data side of things, um, you know, again, this is sort of one of the most important new features of, of Fedora 4. And throughout the day, we'll be sort of hitting on what some of the potential is here. But um, I, I think this is really important to emphasize that uh, Fedora 4 has been built from the ground up to be fully compliant with the uh, linked data platform 1.0 specification. Um, and you can look this up online. There's a, a GitHub repository with a number of uh, tests that you sort of run against um, software to make sure that it's compliant with this emerging set of um, linked data standards. Uh, and so Fedora is routinely sort of um, run against these tests and uh, we're always sort of making modifications as necessary to make sure that we're still maintaining compatibility with this uh, linked data platform specification. Um, and so this really uh, makes sure that Fedora is, is um, able to fully participate in, in any sort of linked data uh, and semantic web capabilities that, that, you might, um, that you might have in mind. And it's important to note here that most of these use cases really haven't been fully fleshed out. I mean, we making sure that the software itself is capable of supporting whatever sort of uh, linked data and semantic um, use cases uh, that you might have, but we actually haven't seen many of these use cases yet. And I imagine as we sort of go forward with beta pilots and implementations of Fedora 4, we're going to see a lot of really great, interesting ways that people are um, using it and, and, and uh, participating in some of these capabilities. So, uh, you know, for example, if you take a look around online, you can find uh, linked data browsers and applications that let you point to a URI and, and sort of crawl the, the triples and, and pull back, you know, a, a sort of on the fly constructed um, uh, page that kind of looks like a Wikipedia page or, you know, just kind of uh, crawling the web of, of RDF and, and doing visualizations and doing interesting things. Um, and all of these capabilities are supported with Fedora. So if your repository is sort of open and you have lots of rich uh, uh, properties on your objects with um, uh, linking out to URIs, um, then you can really do, uh, I think, some really interesting things with, with the linked data capability. So this is just sort of a sort of future thinking uh, feature set that, that Fedora 4 has built in uh, from the ground up. Um, and, you know, one of the ways that you can do this is potentially uh, taking advantage of, of the fact that metadata on your uh, resources can be represented 
uh, as RDF. So uh, you can have an XML data stream as like a mods data stream or Dublin Core data stream, just the same way that it was represented in Fedora 3. Uh, or you can use an RDF-based ontology for your metadata uh, and store uh, all of these as properties on, uh, on the object. Uh, and again, these properties can uh, reference literals, but they can also reference URIs. So these are just ways that um, you can really uh, expand the linked data capabilities um, of your repository. Uh, so now I'm going to move on to talking a little bit about some of the external components. So, um, so I've covered the, the sort of core components of Fedora 4, but there are many pluggable components as well. Uh, and these external components aren't uh, aren't things that are, are sort of unimportant. They're just they're not part of the the, the sort of base core um, software. They're they're more pluggable than that. Um, so uh, indexing, I think, is an important one. And the way that uh, indexing works for uh, for Fedora 4 is there is a uh, a JMS message consumer uh, web application, and this is just one possible implementation. This is one that exists and is used. Uh, but you could write a different connecting application if you wanted to. But there is a message consumer that exists. And this is just a web application that listens for JMS messages uh, that the repository emits on updates. So when you create an object or you, uh, you update the properties of an object or something like that, the repository will um, emit a JMS message and this message consumer will consume that message. Uh, and then it'll do something with it. So uh, it might uh, relay that message out to uh, a triple store. I'll talk a little bit about the uh, external triple stores, but um, uh, searching and triple store, all that's mm -hmm. sort of external to the repository. Um, so you can have um, a, uh, uh, an external uh, triple store set up uh, and your message consumer can um, catch a, a message from the repository uh, and send that out as a, as a Sparkle update to the, um, to the external triple store. Uh, or if you have an external search application set up like Solar, for example, um, you can have that update in the repository, um, get consumed by this message consumer, and then sent out to your solar index to, um, to update that. And basically, you just have to use a property to uh, set a particular resource as indexable. It's just an RDF type property. If it's set up to be indexable, then uh, the message consumer will um, uh, consume that and, um, uh, and make sure that it updates the, um, uh, the indices. Uh, and so, as I mentioned, one of the applications for this, and there are several possible applications, but uh, one of them has to do with um, the triple store and external search applications. So um, in Fedora 3, the, the uh, triple store was built in, Mulgara was, was sort of built in, but um, this is all external in Fedora 4. So uh, we've done some testing with a couple of different triple stores, uh, Sesame and, and Fuseki are the, are the two that we've um, kind of tested and are, are sure work well. Uh, but basically any uh, triple store that supports a, a Sparkle update could, could be plugged in here. Um, and so this is really important because uh, as triple stores uh, uh, become more scalable and performant and are able to handle larger and larger numbers of triples, um, so you, as a Fedora 4, will be able to take advantage of these because it's a pluggable component. So if you're using a triple store uh, and you start to run into some scalability issues, uh, and there's a better one out there for you, uh, then you can just swap them out uh, or you can do an upgrade if, if they, they release an upgrade. Um, so this really wasn't possible in the previous version, but, uh, but this is now something that um, can really help with uh, scalability concerns of uh, being able to handle uh, large numbers of triples in the, um, uh, in the repository. And as I mentioned, search kind of works in a similar way. Um, it's it's uh, um, uh, something that would, needs to be uh, implemented on a case-by-case -case basis. So there is a solar implementation, there is uh, an Elasticsearch implementation that have been tested and work. Um, and conceivably, you could uh, set up if you're using a, or interested in using a different search application, um, that can be set up too. Uh, the, the message consumer is there is pretty agnostic with regard to uh, what applications it interacts with. Uh, so you can have repository messages relayed to uh, various external components. Um, another thing that this um, message consumer can um, do is, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, supporting that sort of JCR uh, XML representation of the repository. Uh, so as uh, JMS messages are emitted from the repository, the JCR XML gets updated uh, so that you have that sort of consistent, transparent representation of your repository. So, you know, these components are very flexible um, and can be implemented in, uh, in different ways. Um, authorization, I think, is an important thing to, uh, to cover, and this is something that 
Um, lots of people use so this idea of security uh, in the repository. And this is another pluggable component in Fedora 4. Um, so there is a plug-in point, uh, and it can call out to, some, to uh, an optional um, enforcement module here. So uh, there are currently two implementations of authorization. There is a role-based authorization, uh, and there's a ZACML um, uh, uh, authorization implementation. Uh, others are certainly possible. So uh, if you have a different authorization scheme that you'd like to use in Fedora 4, uh, it's just a matter of plugging it into this framework uh, and having it having it work. But um, two implementations currently exist that would cover many use cases for uh, for authorization. Role based. This is fairly simple. Um, basically, there is an access control list um, that's defined uh, on a Fedora resource uh, that has a, a number of roles uh, that are allowed to access that particular content. Um, and so. Uh, when a user tries to access that resource, uh, Fedora just compares the user's roles with those that are listed in the ACL uh, and either allows or denies access. Um, and this is one of those opportunities where um, you can use the inherent tree structure to your advantage because uh, if Fedora looks at a particular node, someone tries to access a, um, a resource in Fedora uh, and there's no ACL associated with that resource, then um, Fedora will simply go up the tree until it finds a parent resource that has an ACL associated with it and do the comparison at that point. Um, so you can kind of structure things um, uh, in that way. And there's actually some work currently going on um, to somewhat change um, the system to be slightly more flexible. Uh, currently, the ACLs are attached to, uh, to nodes, um, but there's some effort going in to have a, um, a section of the repository where uh, all of the ACLs are sort of stored, and the nodes just reference the ACLs that are that are stored in this this one location. Um, in practice, it doesn't really change how this works, but um, functionally, it's it's a slightly different um, setup. Uh, ZACML, uh, many of you are probably familiar with with ZACML. It's implemented quite commonly uh, in Fedora three, uh, and so this exists in in Fedora four as well. And this was uh, a few months ago. This was sort of um, implemented. Uh, so you define a default ZACML policy for the repository that uh, gets, you know, uh, that's the fallback if, if no uh, override policy is, is found. Um, but each resource can override that, um, that default ZACML policy with its own, uh, with its own policy. Um, and so that's uh, basically how this is set up to work. Um, it, it, and it's, it's set up to use the tree structure. So um, if, uh, if a policy is set up on a particular resource, then uh, all of its children will inherit that policy unless they also override that, that ZACML policy. Um, so uh, those of you who are familiar with ZACML, um, it's fairly probably familiar, but this is kind of how things are set up to, to currently work in, um, work in Fedora 4. Uh, ZACML 2.0 is the, the particular implementation. Um, so I'll say a few words here as well uh, about performance, um, because I think this is sort of uh, an important consideration for uh, for those of you that are adopting Fedora 4. Um, it's uh, it's one of the guiding principles of, uh, of the software is to make sure that, uh, and sort of bundled in with this is the idea of scalability, and they're, they're very kind of interrelated in, um, in a lot of ways. Uh, so one of the ways uh, that performance um, is, uh, is taken into consideration are, are uh, with transactions. So um, transactions allow you to kind of bundle together several actions uh, into a single uh, event in the, in the context of the repository. So um, often the slowest uh, action in the repository is when things are actually uh, committed and written to disk. Um, and so transactions allow you to set up a chain of events uh, that don't actually happen until you um, commit that transaction. Um, and as you're building it, you can make changes to it. Um, and then even after you commit that action, uh, there's a capability to roll it back. Uh, so if you commit it and then realize you've, you've made a huge mistake, you can you can roll back that transaction and, um, and it'll be uh, the repository will will restore to that previous state. Um, but where this really helps is in in the context of performance, and we've done some testing um, that's shown anywhere between a thirty to sixty percent um, performance increase when taking advantage of transactions. So uh, this is potentially something really useful to. Uh, to do if you're setting up a Fedora 4 repository and you're going to be making a lot of edits, a lot of changes to the repository, um, you can use transactions as a way of, uh, um, of improving your performance. Um, a word about clustering here. So clustering is, um, you know, setting up uh, multiple uh, Fedora instances and linking to them together. 
Um, and clustering can, can be kind of done for various reasons. Uh, so there, there are kind of different use cases why you might want to uh, build a cluster. Uh, currently, Fedora 4 supports clustering for uh, high availability use cases. Um, so, you know, you want to make sure that uh, when people are accessing the repository, that, their, um, ac that the, the performance is consistent, and also that if one of the nodes in the, in the Fedora uh, network goes down, that um, traffic will be redirected to uh, another node and, and, you know, visitors to your repository um, won't know the difference. Uh, so this is something that's currently supported. Uh, and what you can do is set up a Fedora cluster so that there's um, a, a load balancer uh, set up in front. So read requests are just distributed evenly between those instances. Um, and yeah, the failover is, is, um, is supported there as well. Uh, so I have some links here to uh, the wiki pages. Uh, these are th places that you can go. Uh, everything that I've been talking about today is covered in quite a lot of detail on the Fedora wiki, uh, particularly the link there to the features section. Um, this has been set up so that uh, you can kind of go through uh, and, and look at every feature that's being targeted for the Fedora 4.0 release. Uh, there's a roadmap page as well if you'd like to see what features are being targeted for future releases, uh, 4.1, 4.2, etc. Uh, within this uh, uh, roadmap document, uh, you can find links to specific documentation on every one of the features that I've been sort of covering briefly today. Uh, so if there's any of these that sort of pique your interest, you can dive into a lot more detail. Um, the wiki is, uh, there's a lot of pages on the wiki, but we've tried to organize it in a way that makes sense. Uh, and there's pretty extensive documentation on, on virtually any, anything you might be interested in uh, diving into uh, in a little bit more detail. 